<laughs> Amen. Testing one, two. Might want to turn me up just a hair. There you go. Thank you, Bob. Just a hair. Amen. All right, as you all come in and get seated, we're going to get ready here in about one minute. Hallelujah. I'm going to have you all stand, if you would, please, and we will uh, pray. Good to see Bob and Carol from Georgia here this morning. I was uh, talking to him yesterday about the church they're at down there. It sounds like things are going great. Really, really glad they're there. They're part of the ministry there, and so just continue to pray. What's the name of the church again, Bob? Lifeway. Wow. New life. Lifeway. Just saying. Good name. All right, grab the hand of the person next to you, and we will pray. We need to, uh, and we're going to lift up uh, Esme today. The baby, she uh, was born, and she has a little a problem with her blood sugar, so we're going to continue to lift her up before the Lord this morning. As you're holding hands, I just want you to hear this word, and this is out of John 10, and this has just been bubbling in my soul this last couple of days because... <clears throat> I think as believers, sometimes we just struggle and hurt and God brings those things up in our lives that need to be changed and it makes it kind of tough sometimes. Can you say amen? But God's point is this this morning. He says the thief is the one who's coming in order to steal and to kill and destroy your your joy, wants to rob you of the blessings of God, wants to keep you from recognizing when God sent Jesus to the cross. All the things that Jesus bought for you, the enemy does not want you to experience those things, right? He wants to take them away from you. But I love this word. And this is, let me reaffirm this to you this morning. Jesus said that He came that you might have and enjoy life to the full. That you might have and enjoy life to the full. Hallelujah. And have it in tremendous abundance. So I just want to put this thought in your mind today that God wants you to have a great life, to enjoy yourself, to be happy. Now that can't happen if you've got lots of issues all the time with everything that goes on around you. You've got to let things go. Amen? Hallelujah. You got that slide ready? Shane, let it go. and He doesn't have it. Okay. Well, here's the word for you this morning to enjoy life. Let it go. Forget about it, okay? Amen. So let's bow our heads. Father, we thank You this morning. Jesus came in order to give us a wonderful life, a blessed life, a happy life, a life of joy and peace, a life, God, that we go through troubles and tests. We know, God, You're with us every step of the way. So, Lord, I pray that You'll just burn that into our hearts, O God. Hallelujah. We thank You for that. Now, bless Your people this morning. Father, let us let go what we're thinking of And let us just enter in and worship You in spirit and in truth, even as Jesus said. We thank You this morning. We're not into religion, but into a divine and a wonderful and a joyous relationship with You, God. We thank You for it right now in Jesus' name. And everybody said Amen. Amen. Hug two people, preferably somebody maybe you don't know, and tell them you're glad they're here this morning. Praise God. And let's worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Kill the lights, if you would. Salvation's waiting there You build a mighty fortress Ten thousand burdens high Love is here to lift you up Here to lift you up If your love and your wandering Come stumbling down 
like a prodigal child. Walls are calling, gates of glory open wide. All who straight away unspeakable things you've done. Fix your eyes on the mountain, let the past be dead and gone. Come all you saints and sinners, you cannot run God. Whatever you've done can overcome the power of His blood. If you're lost and wandering, come stumbling in like a prodigal child. See the walls are it's a glory open wide if you know they'll break again. Come stumbling in like a prodigal child. Walls are crumbling. It's a glory open wide. Like a prodigal child, lost up, come to live. The gates of glory open wide. If you're lost, in breath again. Come stumbling in, like a prodigal child, lost up, come to live. The gates of glory open wide. The gates of glory open wide. It's a glory open wide. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Twenty years of age, I'm still looking for a dream. A war's already waged for my destiny. But you've already won the battle. You've got great plans for me. No, I can't always see. Cause I got a couple days. Got a couple rips in my jeans Trying to fit the pieces together But perfection is my enemy And on my own I'm so clumsy But on your shoulders I can see I'm free to be me When I was just a girl Thought I had to figure it out See my life would turn around And I'd make it here somehow But things don't always come that easy And sometimes I would die Cause I got a couple things in my finger Got a couple things in my jeans Gotta make the pieces together Sometimes I believe that I can't do anything Yet other times I think I've got nothing good to bring But you look at my heart and you tell me that I've got all your sins And it's easy to believe Things in my finger, got a couple of in my teeth. 
Aren't you glad you're free to be you? Don't rob yourself of you. We're free to be us in him. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. God loves a lullaby, a mother's tears in the dead of night. Better than a hallelujah sometimes. God loves a drunkard's cry, soldiers plea not to let him die. Better than a hallelujah sometimes. Up the fight better than a hallelujah sometimes. Tears of shame for what's been done, the silence when the words won't come are better than a hallelujah sometimes. We pour out our miseries, God just hears a melody. Beautiful, the mess we are, the honest cries of breaking hearts are better than a hallelujah, better than a church bell ringing, better than a choir singing from God, but oh, cry out for his wisdom and vision. You won't regret it. Because God, we look to you today. Let us look to you every morning we wake up. Before our feet hit the ground, God, give us vision for the day and wisdom to be your hands and feet, God.
God, I love to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I love to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Ah, uh, we worship you, Lord. Sing it out, church. God, I love to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. And I will And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. He does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, 
Father. Forever you reign, O God, in our hearts. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Just lift your hands for just a second. Let's give God thanks and praise this morning. Hallelujah. You're here. You're not in the hospital. You're here. You're not in jail. Let's give God thanks and praise. Lord, we thank you for your salvation. It's so great and so wonderful. But God, you look down on us and love us with an everlasting love. Thank you for that, Lord. We give you honor for that this morning. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you honor, O oh God. You are wonderful. You are eternal. We just take time to give you a little love and back, O oh God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When Jesus was on the cross, one of the things He said that many people don't understand is, My God, my God, why have You forsaken Me? I want you to understand this morning that Jesus took your rejection, forsakenness, and He says to you this morning, He will never leave you or forsake you. He, Jesus took sin. He, he, who became, he became sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. You've got to begin to understand that, my brothers and sisters. That's a great exchange. He takes your sinfulness, your problems and your issues, and He gives you His love, His forgiveness, and His solution. Aren't you glad for that? Now, come on now. Aren't you glad for that? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> well, praise God. Oh, man. I'm just so happy today that you're here. You made a good choice to be here today. You're spending your time here this sunny, warm morning, and you made a good choice. God bless you for that. Amen. I'm so happy that you did. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Wow. Hallelujah. While Brett plays this a little bit on his guitar, if you need to pray this morning, this area is open. If you need to come down, confess. If you need to come down just and ask God for help, now's the time to do it. Man, I need His help. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah. Now's the time. This is wide open. We're not in a hurry. I don't have anywhere to go today. We'll stay here till 3 or 4 o'clock. We have to. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Come down and pray. Seek the Lord while He may be found. The door is open. Hallelujah. God shut the door on Jesus and He opens the door on you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank You, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless these that are praying. Seek in Your face this morning, Father. Oh, God, we desire You more than anything. Hallelujah. Thank You, Jesus. Yes, sing it, Sarah. Where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. Give me wisdom. Yes. Sing this. You know just Hallelujah. What to do. Thank you, Father God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God, I love to you. God, I love to you. Where my help comes from, give me wisdom.
down You know just what to do Love you, Lord, my strength I will love you, Lord, my shield And I will love you, Lord, my rock Forever, all my days, I will love you, God circumstance hallelujah our God reigns hallelujah our God reigns forever all my days Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, okay. Stretch out your hands towards my mom real quick. We're going to pray for her. Hallelujah. Okay. She went to live with some guy. Okay. Well, we'll pray for her. Okay. Well, Father, we lift Brooke up to you. We thank you, Father God, that nothing takes you by surprise. And that, Father God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, you're reaching out to her heart. We pray she'll have an open heart to hear. And uh, this situation, Father God, is nothing in the hands of the Lord. So we lift her up to you. Bless Becca. Touch Jason. Help them, Father God. And bless Grandma, Great Grandma. Help her, Father, to be at peace. To give this to you. And we believe, God, for a great move in Brookie's heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's do this. I know some of you are seated. Would you stand for just a minute? I believe the King is here this morning, and here's what I want to do. Give him a, a hand. Give him a round of applause to Jesus. To Jesus this morning. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you. You're awesome. We give you love. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be reseated if you want to.
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for God? <laughs> I am so glad that He's in my life. I won't know what I'd do without Him. I'd be very, very lost. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. I'm going to have Scott and the ushers come. I'm going to turn the house lights up, please. And we will do this morning's offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good to see you all here this morning. Praise God. Good to have Paula here. She had surgery last week. You feeling okay? Yep, she's got her arm in a sling. She does respond to the nickname Lefty now. <laughs> so good to have you all here this morning. Good to see Cindy and her son Kelly here today. Love you guys. Glad you're here today. Amen. Glad all of you are here. I'd name all of you, but uh, it would take too long. <laughs> if you've got your offering this morning, let's lift this up before the Lord. We thank God for what He's doing, what He has done. Thank you to the uh, worship team this morning. Didn't they do wonderful today? Appreciate them so much. If you've got your offering, let's just lift this up. Like We're going to sow this like seed, like a farmer would do. Father, we thank You today for Your many blessings and how You've just richly blessed us, even like... This morning, Father, I'm just overwhelmed with Your presence. You're so good to us. So, Lord, we give back just a portion of what You've given to us today. And I pray, God, You give in to every life, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Let them receive great blessing from You as they give, Lord. You said that You love the cheerful giver. Help us to give till we're cheerful. And, Father God, You said to us that if we would obey You in this area, that You would open up the windows of heaven of blessing. So we thank You for it. We praise You for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said Amen. Amen. Praise God. Here, Scott, I'm going to give this to you. We are on summer schedule, so there's no Sunday night service. Uh, Men's and Women's Fellowship will be meeting again, and Sunday night will start in September. Um, also, I uh, just wanted to remind you to continue to pray for Tuesday night and Friday night. Men's uh, recovery meets on uh, Fridays, and women's meets on Tuesdays at 6. If you'd like to get into recovery, it's very confidential. Nobody will know you're here except you and those that are running the group. So I just want to encourage you to be able to do that. Amen. Anybody got a praise report to share this morning? Anything good happening to you? We want to share that with everybody. I see Mrs. E-Step back there. Go ahead. I don't see Mr. E-Step, but I see There he is. Praise God. So her, her mother, how old is your mom? 76-year-old mother tripped over the vacuum cord, which I do quite frequently myself. She fell, but she's okay. Praise God. That's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Continue to pray for the Porter family because they've, they've got an issue with uh, Esme. She is better. Her blood sugars were kind of off a little bit. Flavia is over at, at um, Peak and Manor. She's in recovery, recovering from her fall as well. Continue to pray for her. She wanted to be here today, but uh, unfortunately she could not be here today. But she did tell me that she's going to cook for me, so I love her very much for that. Some of you don't know, but Flavia had her own restaurant for many years, and she is an expert Italian cook. I love Italian food. Now, I'm Irish and German, but I love Italian food. You know what I'm saying, huh? So, also, one thing that uh, did uh, enter my mind this morning is uh, all those that are helping with the children, you and Kids Zone, I want to thank all of you for your faithfulness. Thank you for working in Kids Zone. You know who you are. Appreciate all your efforts. Um, you want to know how good your giving is? We were able to go out and get a brand new flat screen TV. It's not very big, it's a 32 inch element from Walmart. And I got him a Blu -ray, little Blu-ray player because our other player was kind of clunky and old. And this one's good. And it's got the best video connection you can get. So the picture will be a lot better for all of our kids. So we're thankful for that. Amen. So we're going to let the kids go. Yeah, the kids' own teachers are, yeah, praise God. 
We'll let the uh, kids' own kids go to kids' own. Love them. Bless you guys. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. While they go back there, I'm going to have all of you stand. We're going to pray real quick for this morning's word. <clears throat> Scott. Appreciate it. Amen. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me, if you would, for just a second. Father, we thank you this morning for what you've already accomplished by your Spirit. Thank you for Josh and his wife. We thank you, God, you're going to continue to move and work in their family. Thank you for everyone that's here today, God. As you continue to move and work in our lives, we just submit ourselves and surrender ourselves to you, Father. Now, Lord, I pray this morning, Holy Spirit, you are spoken of by Jesus as the great teacher. Open our minds to hear what you have to say today, Holy Spirit. We want to hear from God. We want to know your name. We want to know the nature of our Father God. So we thank you this morning for new revelation to break into our minds in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You can be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Got a real quick joke for you this morning. So the laugh-o-meter is on. I think you guys will get a kick out of this one. This was approved by my wife, so if it's not good, you can blame her. A couple guys were vacationing in Hawaii, two priests, and they decided to wear casual clothes so they wouldn't be identified as priests while they're out on the beach. They bought Hawaiian shirts, candles, were out on the beach for a while. They noticed this beautiful blonde in a tiny bikini. And they said, good afternoon, Father, she said to them as she walked by. And they were like, how did she know we were fathers? How would she even recognize us? They couldn't figure it out. They were stunned. How did they know that we were clergy? So they decided the next day to go back to the store. They bought even wilder attire, surfer shorts, tie-dyed T-shirts. And then they got dark glasses. They figured this way, no one will recognize that we are clergy. So they returned to the beach, and this same very beautiful blonde walked by wearing a bikini. They, she passed by and nodded politely at them and said, Good morning, fathers. They said, Wait a minute, just a minute, young lady, said one of the priests. We are priests, and we're very proud of it. But how in the world did you know who we were? She said, Don't you recognize me? I'm Sister Catherine from the convent. <laughs> So the next time you go to Dragon World or Dragon Land or whatever they call it, and you see somebody that might be a, might be a Catholic nun, who knows? I doubt it, but you never know. <laughs> oh, good laughs, good for you, isn't it? Amen. Scripture says laughter does good like a good medicine in your body. You need to laugh. Amen. Well, the we're on the Nature of God series. This is book four. We've been talking about Abram what I'm going to call him, for lack of a better term. You know him as Abraham in the Bible. But he's still Abram right now. He hasn't, his name hasn't been changed. Last week, we took a quick look at who Abram was and where he lived. We know that he was married to Sarai, that he lived in Haran, which is now in southern Turkey. It was a town of about 20,000 people then. We know that the time he lived in was marked by a lot of idol worship, they had gods of the sun, gods of the moon, fertility, gods of harvest, to name a few. We know his father, whose name was Terah, T-E-R-A-H. Terah was either a priest or at least he was a maker of these gods. And he was selling them to other people. So he had a little business going on and Abram helped him in this business. So Abram's just an idol worshiper. He's out there just, you know, going to bars and clubs, doing his thing, working his job had really no knowledge of God, no real relationship with God. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Say yes. yes. We know he grew up superstitious, religious, apart from God, except that there's religious tradition in Judaism that says, and you may not know this or not, I talked about this last week, how many know who Noah is? Noah, the guy that was in the flood, right? Yes. How many know who Noah was? I didn't see very many hands. Okay. All right, the flood had happened. Noah, at this time was still alive. Did you know that? He lived just north of Haran, and Jewish tradition in the book of Jasher 
says that when Abraham was, or Abram was 10 years old, he went there and actually learned about God from Noah. Pretty amazing. And we know that God had spoken to Abraham, right? Genesis 12, 1. Now in Haran, the Lord had said to Abraham, go away or get out from your country and your relatives, your family, from your father's house. Go to the land which I will show you. This is a preview because next week we're going to get out and then we're going to go too. Did you know God's calling you to get out and go to? Yeah. Amen. There's spiritual application to these things, okay, my brothers and sisters? God had spoken to Abram. God had spoken to Abram. It takes time and training to hear His voice, doesn't it? This morning, that's a little bit of what I want to speak on just shortly with you this morning. And that is this. God wants to ask you this question. How well do you know His voice? You know, it's one thing to pray. I know all of you pray, right? Say amen. Are you guys awake this morning? I know it's summertime. Come on now. We got coffee stat in the back if you need some. Boop. So you can hear this. I want you to hear this this morning. How well do you know the voice of God? Thank you, Martin. I knew that was Martin's voice. How well do you know his voice this morning? Now, this is really an important thing. We kind of blow this off a little bit, but it's very important that you know the voice of God. And like I said, it takes time and training to hear his voice. It's important because don't you want to go his direction instead of yours? A couple that came down here tonight or this morning said, hey, you know what? We've been doing our own thing. We want to do God's thing. We want to have God at the focus in the center. Of our... Amen. I was like, amen. I do too. Every day I want him to be the center and the focus of my life. I don't want to play games. How about you? I want to get serious about this. And God is wanting you to get serious about this. Now, the voice of the Lord, it says in Psalm 29.4. I think he's got that up there maybe. There it is. The voice of the Lord is powerful, it says in the Hebrew. The voice of the Lord is majestic, it says in the Hebrew. It's not in volume, but in life. God's voice will impact your life. It will change the way you are. It will change the way you walk. It will change the way you think. God's after you. Look out to change you so you can get in a place where you can hear Him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It says that there's three things that we need to develop in getting to know His voice. And number one, we need to get into a quiet place. This is 1 Kings 19.12. God was going to speak to Elijah. And here's how He did it. There was an earthquake that came. But guess what? God's voice wasn't in the earthquake. Then there's this gigantic fire. God wasn't in the fire either. After the fire, listen to this, there was a sound of a gentle whisper. And that was the voice of God. To develop your hearing ear to the voice of God, you have to, to a certain degree, and I know I've been on this a lot and I apologize, but you've got to let go what you're feeling and let go what you're wanting and let God speak to your mind. Are you hearing me? We are so lost that we often want things that are harmful for us. Did you know that? I mean, I have eight grandkids I've been blessed with. Deb's holding one of them this morning. If she wanted to drive my truck right now, I don't think I would let her do that. Well, either one of you, but probably Emma Rose. <laughs> That's another story. But Emma Rose probably, I probably wouldn't let her drive my truck because she's not ready yet, right? There's things that some of us want because we're so lost and broken that if we got them, they'd be destructive to us. Are you hearing me? So we have to be patient and wait and develop and get developed in the Lord so that we can receive the things God wants to give to us. Amen. So you sometimes have to empty yourself of yourself and relax. Amen? How many know breathing is very important? Right. Do you ever catch yourself holding your breath, though, for no reason? You get tense, you get a little stressed, and... And then finally, you know, you finally remember, hey, I better breathe right now or something bad's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Right? 
You need to get into a place that's quiet to hear from God. And you need to be able to sit down. And I do this sometimes when I come into the sanctuary by myself. Scott's been in here. I know he's come in and prayed. Gary's been in here. They both have come in here. And you can do that during the week. If you'd like to come in here and sit and pray, the lights are off. It's very, very cool in here. It's just a real quiet. You get quiet before the Lord and you begin to breathe a little bit. You need to breathe from here, not here. So you breathe. Kind of breathe it in through the nose, out the mouth. In fact, you can actually stand a little bit. Get yourself kind of in a comfortable standing position. Just relax. I'll tell you what, our society is in such a hurry and has so many things to do and listens to music and stuff all the time. We need to slow down, kind of put our shoulders back, just take a big deep breath, relax a little bit. Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me today? Holy Spirit, I need to hear from you today. And you know what will happen? You'll hear from Him. I want that in my life, don't you? Listen, I've talked about this before. Debbie and I love to talk. Actually, I like to listen. And Debbie likes to talk. That's okay. (laughs) But I'll tell you what. We have a habit. She goes back in her room and she's doing her thing. And I hear her back there speaking, but I can't discern what she's saying. Okay? So we've been telling each other lately, let's, we need to cut this. This is frustrating. We need to get into the same room so that we can hear each other talk. You need to get into the same room with God and listen to Him talk to you. Right? Hallelujah. I think this is huge for most... Look at it this way. Some of you know what it's like to hear His voice. You need to hear it more clearly. You need to hear it more often. You need to focus on doing this better. Amen? Is there anything wrong with that? Doing it better? Listening better to Him? Amen? There's no pressure on you right now. Think of that for a minute. In this building, right now, in this place, at 10 till 12, there is no pressure on you right now. Just relax. The things of tomorrow, they'll be right there tomorrow, won't they? Let them go. The things that happened yesterday are in your past, right? Hallelujah. Forget about it. And just relax. You're here right now. Be in this moment. Hear the Holy Spirit minister life to you this morning. Wow. That's good. That's good, Pastor Mark. I'm receiving that myself. Hallelujah. That's a good thing. The presence of God is here. My mom would tell the story about her voice and me listening. That when I was a little boy, and she probably remembers this, she'd say, Mark, Mark, where are you at? Where are you? And what would I say to you, Mom? I right here. I right here. I would hear my mom's voice and I would respond to her voice. Right? God hears your voice and He wants to respond to you. But after you pray, sometimes you get a little busy. Right? You get on the phone. You watch TV. The kids are crabbing at you. Whatever. You've got to go to work. You've got things on your mind. You've got bills to pay. People to see. Things to do. Places to go. Right? There was a time back in the day in a place called Eden where a couple of people were sitting there and it says in Genesis that in the cool of the day when the breeze would blow, God would come down into the garden Hey, Adam, what you doing, buddy? Where you at? Come here. I want to show you this thing. It's called a laptop. I'm sure Adam was like, what is a laptop, Father? I have no idea. Well, let me explain it to you. Don't look at me like that. I believe Adam and God had a relationship. Like you have a relationship. God was out there. Adam was right here. You got it better. You know why? God's not out there. Guess where God's at? He's in here. You carry Him with you. You got instant communication anytime you want it. Amen? Now, I have Verizon Wireless. 
and I'm trying not to say anything bad about it, but lately it's been dropping calls. Aren't you glad when the Lord talks to you, your call is not going to get dropped? Amen? I have unlimited data now. I used to have to pay for my data all the time. God wants you to know you have unlimited talk and text with Him. Are you hearing me? You've got unlimited talk and text with God right now. Now here's the deal. He wants to respond back. Are you ready to receive it? Are you open to hearing it? Hallelujah. They, Adam and Eve knew that it was God in the garden. How did they know that? They heard His voice. Now His voice is not always audible, but if you listen well, if you listen closely, and you listen intently, God will move you into a mindset, or maybe I should say an ear set, so that you can begin to hear His voice and hear what He has to say as He directs your life. Amen? Hallelujah. This is a real skill. Listening is not easy to do, right? How many in here are married? How many, how many of you really listen really good to each other? Well, some of you got your hands up. Some of you are fibbing, but that's okay. You can fib in church. We still love you. We do it by faith. Listening is huge, right? Now, sometimes when Deb's talking to me, I restate what she said because sometimes I don't understand. Stream of consciousness is a very difficult thing to understand, right? Because you might be caught talking about, hey, I really like that color blue. Is he okay? It's like, now wait a minute. You just talked about the color blue and then you asked me, is he okay? What are you talking about? Oh, I was thinking about Joe Blow. Is he okay? It's like, okay. You have to clarify, right? All right, you need to do this with the Lord. Father, am I hearing you right? Is this am I here? Holy Spirit, I want to hear what you're saying. Is this what you're saying to me? I want to hear it. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got to get to a place inside where you slow down and you simplify, so His voice will amplify. Then you can hear what He's saying to you. Abram heard His voice. Guess what? I want you to say this with me. So can I. You can hear His voice. Amen. Number two, the next thing you have to do to be able to discern the voice of God is something that is, is not complicated. Many of you have heard this before, but you've got to get into the book of God. God wrote a book. In this book, is, it's called the Bible, there's a Bible within the Bible that some of you have not yet discovered. <clears throat> the revelation that you have is the life you will live. The revelation that you have is the life you will live, and it's all found in the book of God. Now listen, my brothers and sisters, God wants to take you to a new height. When you go to a new height in Him, there's a new fight, right? New level, new devil. New height, new fight. You got to get ready for that because God's taking us all up a little higher. I read something today before I uh, this morning when I got up that, that I'd never read before that really caused me to think we are really in the last days. Israel, the nation of Israel right now, has got some of the things already built to make a new temple. I always used to thought think that the temple had to be on the dome of the rock. Because on the, on the Dome of the Rock is where this Muslim temple is at, right? And they would have to take it down to put the temple there. Well, I was reading this morning that that is not where the temple was at. It was in a different place in the city of Jerusalem that is wide open and ready to be built. The Jewish people are ready to rebuild the temple. Do you realize for Jesus to come back, that temple is supposed to be there? Say amen. amen. Thank you. I know you're not all experts on the second coming. Neither am I. But this, I thought, was really important. They, I, they showed pictures of the, the candelabra, the, you know, what do they call it, menorah? They got it already built. It's gigantic. It's made out of gold. They've already built some of the, uh, the uh, labor. The, the uh, place of offering has already been built too. All they're ready to do is get the go-ahead and they're going to start building the walls and they're going to make a brand new temple. Now realize the temple was destroyed in 70 A.D. by the Romans. So the Jews have not had a temple for 2,000 years. Isn't that interesting? Jesus came how many years ago? About 2,000 years. Because He is God's temple. He is the place where God dwells. 
And now where does Jesus dwell? Say in me. You are the temple of God. Hallelujah. Nice to know you, temple. <laughs> Folks, the, the thing is, this is clear to me as, 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 a, as just clear as clear water as a bell, whatever. We need revelation. Ephesians 1, I think it's 17, says, Father God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant unto us a spirit, a spirit of wisdom and a spirit of revelation. You can get book learning. You can sit there and not know the book at all. But you need to be open for God to reveal Himself, His true nature to you. How does He do that? By speaking to you. You with me? We need a fresh outlook from within toward the things of God, towards the Word of God, towards the worship of God, towards our relationship with God. We need new revelation, new thoughts, and new freshness. Can you say amen to that? You still there? Yes. All right. Doing this will radically change the quality of your life. Doing this. Getting a desire for a new revelation from the Lord. He knows how to turn your situation around. He's just trying to get your attention so He can speak to you and tell you how. Isn't that good news? He knows your situation. He knows what you're going through. He wants to help you and encourage you. How does He do that? By speaking to your heart. How does He do that? You get to that quiet place where you can hear Him and you get to know the book. Amen? The book within the book. The revelation of the book. Amen? Hallelujah. It's time to move ahead. God doesn't want you wavering and wobbling. Some of you waver and wobble in your face so much. It's like you never know from day to day if you're going to be there for the Lord or not. I want you to get this in your heart. Get strong in Him. Amen. Don't waver. Don't wobble. Your faith needs to be strong. He wants people that are dedicated and committed. He wants you to get that way. Right? Remember the story Jesus told? He said, if you're committed to Me and your life is built on Me, and you're doing the sayings that I'm telling you to do, you're hearing what I'm saying, and you're putting it into practice, hallelujah, guess what? That's like a person who builds his house on a rock. And when the winds and the waves come, that house isn't going to get moved. God doesn't want you to waver and wobble anymore. You need to say, that's it. I'm going to serve Him for the rest of my life. I may make mistakes, but I'm not going to go back. Please, don't quit. Amen? 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 Don't quit. Don't give up. Hallelujah. We can all hear His voice. We can all do better in hearing His voice. Abram, again, possibly learned that when he was with Noah and Shem. I want you to know this morning that some are good at quitting, picking up a fence and giving up. Let this not be said of you. Let this not be said of you. Jesus said, don't take up an offense. That means you have to pick it up and take it. Don't be offended. Don't, don't let yourself be offended by what somebody else says or does. You may not agree with it. That's all right. Amen? Amen? I think we were talking in the office this morning about music. And Bob was saying, Bob Davis was saying, well, I like this one song. It just really moves me. But my mom doesn't really affect her. Then my mom likes this one song that really moves her. And it's like, it's okay, but it doesn't move me. Let's be different. It's okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hallelujah. I love when Brett gets on the guitar and just rips it, man, I love that. Some people don't like that. That's, but can we be gracious enough to love each other anyway? Don't pick up an offense, right? Amen. I love it when we sing. We sing this one song. Uh, Bob, you've done it before. It's a, it's a hymn. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. How Great Thou Art. He sings it in the King James. All right? We don't sing King James songs here pretty much, do we? But that's a beautiful song. I love the message, right? Hallelujah. We can be different. Amen? So let's not take an offense if somebody doesn't like something the way that we do. I just, In fact, I want to show you something. And I haven't put it up yet, but I'm going to do this. Somebody painted this for the church. I just want you to see this. This thing is beautiful, isn't it? Is that awesome or what? The cross has the final word. Is that not beautiful? It's actually signed by the artist. So it's worth a lot of money. Bobby Davis did this. Isn't this wonderful? Thank you, brother. Amen. We are going to hang this somewhere in here. I don't know yet where. 
but we're going to hang this up. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. I think it's just absolutely fantabulous. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. If I can get this not fall here. Amen. We need to know the Word. Hebrews 4.12 says the Word of God is alive. That word alive is Z-A-O. Zao. Comes from the word Zoe, which means to be alive and to have God's life in you. It's alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit. What is your soul? Your mind, will, and emotions. Your spirit, if you're a born-again person, how many have been born again in here that know Jesus? You've been born again by the Spirit of God. Come on, get your hands up. Come on, Becky. Amen. Hallelujah. That means your spirit person is brand new. Okay? And the Holy Spirit will help you discern through the Word what is of you, of your natural man, and what is of the Spirit, your spiritual man. Are you hearing me? So that's a good way to find out whether or not you're hearing from God or whether it's something just in your head. Knowledge of the Scripture will teach you to discern the voice of the Lord. Amen? What is of your soul? Again, what is of your spirit? He wants all of us to get this. Remember, this is not religion. For you that are here and you haven't been here very often, our church motto is come as you are. We don't care how many problems you have. That's not eliminating you from everything that God has. We don't care how many issues you have. We want you to get here and get your issues solved one by one. Amen. So does God. God wants you to be in total health. Amen. In every aspect of healthy thinking, healthy believing, healthy speaking. Amen. Healthy attitude, healthy body. He wants you to be healthy in every aspect of your life. We want that for you too. And if you come in here like we sang this morning, if you come in limping, you come in hurting and broken, this is the greatest place to be. Amen. When you start going through tests and trials, don't stay home. Get your skinny little behind in here and just cry out to God. Yeah. We pour out our miseries. Yeah. God just hears what? A melody. A melody. Amen. Yeah. Don't run from this place. Come to this place when you're going through struggles and hard times. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I've said this to some people before. Listen, if you've got to come to church every Wednesday, every Sunday, and you get, your, you get down there and you kneel every time, you go right ahead. I don't care how many times it takes for you to do that. Yeah. You get there and you be square. Now, just get there. Do it. Yeah. Get down there every time if you need to. Amen? Yeah. So, well, somebody might think I'm kind of weak and going through a problem. Yeah, you know what that means here? We'll pray for you. Yeah. We ain't going to judge you. No. We're not here to judge how many problems you got. You know why? I probably got more than you do. Everybody's got problems. We're all trying to work through them together. Amen? Come as you are with all your hurts, hang-ups, yeah. and habits. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the catch, and I love this last part, leave different. I hope when you come out of here today, you're going to look at each other and say, you know, it was pretty good today. I enjoyed that. Yeah, me too. I felt a little lifted up today. Yeah, me too. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because Monday morning's coming. We know what that means, right? Some of you got to go to work and, you know, you love your job. You love your job, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Through revelation of the Holy Spirit, God will expose your innermost thoughts and desires. It says this in Hebrews 4. Number three, and I will quickly get through this, is get into wanting to know His voice. Some people don't care. I believe I'm speaking to people who want to hear from God, truly want to hear from God. Okay? You want to know His plan for you? You want to know what He's got for you? You want to follow His plan without going to the left or the right? Just follow it step by step. Amen? You do, don't you? Because that's where real success is at. Yeah. Hallelujah. I hope you do. I hope you want to get into wanting to know this. Hallelujah. That's the plan and this voice that God has. This is John chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. I think Shane's got it in there. It's it. Basically, it says this, His sheep hear His voice. Amen. How many in here are God's sheep? Raise your hand. Amen. Very good. That means His sheep doesn't say can or might or maybe. It says His sheep do what? They hear His... He wants, he's already 
pre-believing in you that you're going to hear His voice. Amen? He calls His own sheep by name and He leads them out. He calls His own sheep by name and leads you right where He wants you to go. I think that's pretty cool. Hallelujah. Maybe we should want this more than anything. To hear His voice and pay attention to it. Maybe this is more important than us following our destiny. Maybe this is more important than what we want or what we think makes us happy. Is if we'll go His way, He'll make you happy. And when happiness from, comes from God, folks, it's the best kind there is. Hallelujah. And I don't think we can do this half-heartedly. I think that we need to desire this completely and be committed to praying for discernment to hear His voice. Amen? This ain't for the one who don't care much. If you don't care, you're not going to hear. Relationships mean, relationship means we talk, but also that God talks to us. This is Isaiah 30, 21. Don't you know? Don't you hear? Hasn't been told you from the beginning? He who sits on the foundations of the earth. That's supposed to be Isaiah 30, not 40. Oh, that's all right. I can get it and read it. Gee, I'll have to open my Bible today. What a, what a revolting predicament. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it, Shane. You can get it whenever you can. Isaiah 30. The reason I like this one is this. I want you to hear this. is what the Lord's saying to you this morning. Verse 21. Well, back to verse 20. Your eyes will see what your teachers are teaching. He's going to open your understanding to see it. Verse 21. Your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. He will direct you if you want to be directed. Amen? It's that old adage. You can lead the horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. God wants to lead you by His voice, but He can't do it unless you cooperate and say yes to do it. Amen? Wherever you turn to the right, or whenever you turn to the left, and you're going the wrong direction, you're going to hear the Holy Spirit say, uh-uh, go back this way. Okay. You're veering off. Oh, go back this way. You don't want to wobble and waver in your faith. You want to stay strong, right? Foundationally strong. Stay right with me. Hallelujah. Just stay with me. Praise God. It's taken me a long time to know His voice, folks. Many years of development to do that. You know why? Me got in the way. Just being honest. I want you to get this quick. It's got four ways to hear His voice very quickly. This is, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but you're going to understand what these are. A, you hear His voice in your mind. The more you know His Word, the more you empty yourself of yourself, you'll hear your, His voice in your mind. B, you'll hear His voice like you're hearing this morning from others in the Word that are speaking to you. Or maybe somebody calls you and gives you a word over the phone a word of encouragement. Or maybe you get the morning meds. Some of you get those Tuesday through Friday. And I've had many of you, man, that really spoke to me today. That was the voice of God speaking to you. Right? Isn't that a good thing? Say yes. C, from hearing the Word. Not only hearing the Word from others, but hearing the Word when you read it yourself. When you're reading and studying. And D, from nature. I got a little, real quick little story to tell you, and then we'll take communion this morning. I was laying in bed the other night, had my light on in, in my room, in the room, on my bedside table. And we have the AC on, so the windows are shut. And I was sitting there reading, and all of a sudden I heard this ticking against the window. Tick, tick, tick. And a buzzing. That, from 10 feet away, some June bug had picked up that light and was trying like the Dickens to get in the house to get to the light. And I thought, wow, Lord, I wish I had that determination to keep on going even when it looks like I can't get to it to go after that light in my room. He kept doing it for at least 20 minutes. But what a dumb June bug. He can't get in. There ain't no hope for him. But if you and I want to seek God like that June bug wanted that light and we keep going for God, he's saying the door's wide open. Come on. It's open for you. And you can hear his voice. We're going to go back to Genesis 12, 1 next. But finally, Abram moved. He finally got up 
And he finally moved. Are you ready to move with God? Stand with me if you would. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Bow your heads with me if you would. Just your eyes closed for just a minute. While we give an opportunity for anybody in the house this morning, if you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you got a great relationship with God and you love God and you're hearing Him, you're speaking to Him. If you don't have that yet, would you raise your hand? You can. Hallelujah. If you don't have that relationship with God yet, raise your hand. I see that hand. Anybody else? All right. Just keep your hand up for just a second. Just pray this with me. Father God, I come to You humbly in Jesus' name. I ask You to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I believe in You. And I trust in You, Lord God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know who you are, brother, but I'll tell you this. If you prayed that this morning from your heart, you're a brand new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I did this when I was 19. It was another century, but I was 19. It was another century. The 20th century. Now we're in the 21st. So, All right. Let's do this. Um, we're going to have you guys from the front row. You just go right through here. Scott and Paula will give you the elements of communion. Take them back to your seat. And we'll take communion together this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Oh, good song. Disconnected from all these people, I feel a haze between our souls. Oh, something's telling me there's more than this. I'm searching deep down. Do I stand up and walk out? Do I stand up and reach out? What do I do? I know it's you. I know it's true. Holy Spirit. Broken hearted world needs more of you. The great deceiver 
Oh, the Holy Redeemer, I need to know. Cause it's aching in my soul, it's me torn in two. be seated, y'all. <clears throat> Hallelujah. By the way, that song that Brett and Sarah sang was one they wrote themselves. Isn't that beautiful? Right. Love it. Just love it. Hallelujah. Now you can stay seated, Tracy. Quit making trouble back there. All right. This is very important to, uh, today. I really feel a, the real presence of God uh, in the Lord's Supper and the Lord's Table. So, uh, this is the Apostle Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. God revealed this to Paul because he was not there when they did this originally, was he? He was not one of the original twelve. So somehow God revealed this to him. God wants to re bring revelation into your life. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks... Father, we thank You so much that Jesus gave His life, His body, that was broken for us this morning. We thank You for that. We also thank You for another body, and that's the body of Christ. We thank You for one another. Help us, Father God, never to offend or hurt each other, but to love and forgive one another all the time. He took bread when He had given thanks. He said, He broke it and said, Take, eat. This is My body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of Me. We eat. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper and he said this, Father, we give thanks for the blood that was spilled 2,000 years ago on Golgotha, the place of the skull where Jesus was crucified. That blood that gives us life. That blood that cleanses our soul from sin that blood that gives us life eternal. Thank You for that. Hallelujah. He said this, This cup is the new covenant in My blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of Me shall we drink. Thank You, Jesus, for healing Your people. Verse 26, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till He comes. Greek word, Maranatha. Jesus is coming soon. Get ready. Get your friends ready. We have plenty of room in here. Invite somebody. Bring your friends in here that they might be ready because Jesus is coming soon. All right, stand one more time. We're going to pray. We'll let you all go home. Wednesday night, I'll be back in the, in the book of Joshua again. So come Wednesday night for Bible study at 6.30. 
Hallelujah. And next Sunday we'll be talking about getting out and going out. Amen. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me if you would. Father, we thank You so much for what You've done this morning. We bless You for it. We thank You, Father God, for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. Thank You for the new life. Thank You for all these new lifers. Bless them, Father God. We thank You for blessing them, moving in their hearts. Give them a great week. Let them have a hilarious week of fun and excitement. (laughs) Even on that job, Lord, we pray. And we just thank You, Jesus, for Your love for us. We bless You for it. In Jesus' name, everybody said Amen. Bless you guys. We love you. See you Wednesday.